Hello again, Michael Ware with the Iowa Farms Coalition. I've got Pete Brownell with me from the Iowa Farms Coalition as well. A couple board members here wanted to talk with you today. Um, just, to, just to lay out the foundation for what this video is, uh, Pete and I talked about this before we started recording. Basically, when we build a video like this and our people, uh, our volunteers rather, uh, send this out and everybody gets links for this, it's usually sent to the people who are already kind of uh, in the know or in our camp, so mm -hmm. to speak. So they're IFC members, uh, people who follow us, whatever else. And so Pete and I both agreed that the wise move here was to obviously um, ask you, the people who are the initial recipients of this video, to forward it on, post it up uh, with with other people who are considering firearm ownership for the first time or who, who just picked something up for the first time uh, as the people who could watch this and maybe be the beneficiary. So we're going to rely on the uh, on the people who are already um, gun buffs, if you will, or, or have some working knowledge of firearms and the Second Amendment, uh, to put this out in places where other people can see it and consider it. So with that, what, what we wanted to do was, was see the idea of how a first-time firearm owner uh, could become engaged and, uh, and, and basically how they could uh, plug in to local clubs and how that works. So um, Pete, would you like to start with that for a second here and we'll progress sure, back? Sure, sure, absolutely. Here at, uh, at Brownells, we, we feel these questions all the time. We have a retail store there. So anybody has a retail store, you probably, it's a similar story. The, the philosophy we have is that w when somebody who has never owned a firearm makes that, uh, that step, and they're usually stepping out of that social norm that they grew up in, to come and buy a firearm, cross that threshold, it's a very, it's a very courageous step. So they, they're, they're people of courage. They're asking for help. And I usually have our team think of it this way. And it's a philosophy I think works in almost, it works in very many situations. Usually you're talking to somebody and if you have this approach, they're very intelligent already. They just lack experience or knowledge. And if you approach somebody that way, that they're, they're gonna grasp these concepts quickly, they're going to raise their hand and say, hey, I don't quite understand that word or the acronym you used, and you take the time and have the patience to educate them, you'll have somebody that's a Second Amendment supporter for their whole life. Yeah. Not just them, they'll become a spokesperson for the Second Amendment as well. And, and not just the Second Amendment as a constitutional right, but those that have been practicing it forever. Too many times we're in a situation where there is a predisposed opinion of a gun owner. Don't reinforce that. Yeah. Don't go out there and, and play the role that they think you are because they'll go back reinforced with, yep, I was right. We wanna change their minds on, by being who we really are, which is open and honest and, and helpful. Uh, they're very intelligent individuals. Treat them, start with that, and then a relationship will unfold from there. Yeah. And that's what you're really looking for. Not a transaction, but a relationship. And that's, that's how we all uh, start to work together, which is something we need to be doing right now anyway. So. Start with that and things get better from there. I agree. Uh, when, you, when you, as a current uh, gun owner, very comfortable uh, firearms enthusiast, take somebody to a club, whether it's the local Ikes or, or maybe it's the local range for a shooting night or whatever else, there are many out there now that, that there is such a demand on the ranges for their use. Uh, they've got everything from like couples nights to shooting leagues and all kinds of different things that you can participate with. And many of these people, uh, the participants, the competitors, the range personnel, uh, they are so welcoming. They will bring you in and they will help you. And, and it's okay. Every now and then you might run across one that doesn't work for you. That's all right. Maybe you're in the wrong place and you can go find another because Today, there are many that you can choose from, and so there's lots and lots of good ones out there. And I think as seasoned firearms owners, we have a responsibility to the new folks to bring them in and help them with that. And so as a new person, if you're watching this, those are the things you wanna be looking for. Where can I find a club? Can I Google it? Yes, you can. Uh, can I go out and engage? Can I hit that range uh, and become a participant? Uh, should you be a member of the Iowa Firearms Coalition? Those kinds of things, yes. Should, do we want you to be NRA members? Yes. Should you be paying attention to things like the National Shooting Sports Foundation, uh, referred to as NSSF? Yes, I mean, they've got Project Child Safe is one of them I had written down here in my notes that I wanted to cover real quick. Uh, because as a new firearm owner, how do you take care of that firearm in your home so that it's uh, 
you know, as you mentioned earlier, Pete, how do we lock it up and, and keep it stowed safely so that there's no risk at home for uh, uh, people and children or whatever else that might be in the home? So these yeah. are all things that we want you to consider. Right, right. You'll find a local person that uh, is that gun person that uh, has, probably has a wealth of knowledge. They probably a generational ownership. And the things that are common to you guys that are generational are the brand new concepts, safety, security. Uh, what do I, what, how do I go from the car to the range? Do I put it in my holster? Do I take it out of the case? Where's my ammo? They, those first experiences, nobody wants to step into a, a situation and feel like they have made some kind of social uh, mistake, help them out. That kind of ease and that relationship, that just, uh, that just breeds a broader, uh, umbrella the, for those people who practice the Second Amendment. So, uh, you're you, the people have been doing this for generations, like we have. We hold it. We we kind of have the key. Let's not let's not keep the door locked. Let's open it up. Yeah, well, I agree. When I was a kid, uh, uh, my dad was never really a gun guy. He, if we went out into hunt or do our things in the nature, uh, you'd probably see my dad with a camera rather than a shotgun. Uh, so it was my uncles that that, that kind of brought me up and helped me with firearm safety, and and that's how I learned. And uh, if you don't have somebody like that or you can't find somebody like that, uh, reach out to IFC. We'll put you in touch with somebody local to where you are for a local club or or a shooting range, and we'll we'll get you connected so that you can begin. Right. There's a, and if you're passing this on, please, uh, please do. There's a, there's emerging uh, associations out there that really kind of hit certain demographics. Uh, most recently, I've been involved in helping NAGA, National, National African American Gun Owners Association. We've got two chapters here in Iowa now in a very short time. Period. Really? Because yep. it was just a few months ago, we had none. That's right. So it, it's a group that is starting to realize, hey, let's bond together. They're using um, some of the existing ranges to have uh, an event and, and bring more and more of the community in. Uh, just say, here's, it, it, does, it does wonderful things. So encourage that. Uh, don't be selfish about the range, people. Share it, build it. The extra communities build up more and more places for us to go shoot and enjoy our own sport in yeah. all kinds of different locations. So NAG is a great one. Uh, you have uh, Pink Pistols. You haven't heard about that. The LGBTQ community has started to uh, um, be more and more represented across the United States, and Iowa has a, a pretty decent chapter as well. So uh, Second Amendment's for everybody, shooting's for everybody. New, new shooters are coming to the sport. Um, help them understand it. Be the one that's gonna be the educator out there and, and show them how, uh, how you start from the real basics. There you go, you're right about that. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to put forward tonight in the video. I wanted to, uh, uh, again, I wanted to sit down with you, Pete, for just a second and see if we could reach those people uh, who could be a force multiplier for this message out to those people who need to hear it and to help them a little bit. So I think we've accomplished that. I appreciate your time tonight. Okay. Take care, guys. Thank you.